Well, I'm Aline Fuller King, and I'm excited to be here at the 50th reunion. One of the excitements is a family adopted me nine years ago, and their two daughters go to Chula Vista High. One graduated this year, and one's going to graduate in 2018. And so to go back on the campus with these wonderful young ladies who are involved in dance, because Chula Vista is a performing arts school now, is just wonderful. And so it brings back memories of the days I was there, and I haven't been back. I never went to a homecoming game until last fall when I went to the homecoming and I marched in the parade and it was just great. And so it was good that these young women came into my life so that I could revisit my past. And they live in the house where I lived and so the love is just incredible. And I think that's my legacy is love and connection with people. So um, I'm proud to be a Spartan still. <laughs> And I can still wear my high school sweater, although it's been too hot to put it on, but <laughs> it's fun to know that uh, I have so many good friends and from the past and also to see so many of our classmates doing well and looking good and having children and grandchildren and, and having good times still. I'm saddened by those of the past, but it's part of life, the cycle of life. And so I'm just happy to be here tonight and hope the best for everybody. I'm Marla Vander Hayden, friend. I was Marla Huntington first, or before friend. I was married for 19 years to Lou Huntington. And then I was married most recently to my second husband, Jim Friend. We were married 30 years, and he just passed away in February. So I miss him terribly. But uh, I live in El Cajon, live in the Fletcher Hills area, and uh, have six children, 26 grand and great-grandchildren. Yeah, a lot, a lot. And they're, they live all over the country, so I get to visit them. And I'm loving this reunion. Uh, it's been a work of love, and I think just to know that we have friendships, you know, from that far back. In fact, I was just going through my the junior high yearbook, and showing people that have signed it, like Greg Vigil and Van Davis and Rick Shepard, and um, just, that's special, you know, to have those friendships after all these years. Um, maybe a 60th, 10 year from now, I don't know. I'm not gonna plan it, but somebody else can. Uh, a 60th would be nice, but I think just to be able to see all these people. And I did, this summer, I did get to go and visit Kathy Blakely, Serrano back in Branson. I visited Barbara Falk in Kansas. I visited Lupita in north of Tucson where she lives and her husband. Uh, in the past I visited Rick Shepard up in Nebraska. So I've been all over and trying to see as many classmates as I do and I love this class and I just I love the years that we were growing up. Chula Vista was special and uh, I miss, I miss those years, but yet that's, that's good memories, good memories. I'm Rhonda Tiffany Barrett, and I live in Sacramento, California, and I've been there for 38 years. Um, I am married I, with two children, and I married Rip Barrett. Rip Barrett is the brother of Miss Arlene Barrett, who was our Teacher of the Year in 1965. So clearly I won the lottery there. <laughs> I have two children. Um, Allison is my eldest, she's 39, and she lives in Pacific Grove and has two children, eight and six. My son Jeff lives in Pleasant Hill, the East Bay, and he has two little girls, uh, four and six. And they're wonderful. I love being a grandmother. It's my favorite thing on earth. Uh, the other thing I'd like to talk to you about is 51 years ago, I was honored to be chosen as the SpartanNet leader. And that was a momentous time and a very interesting time because we were given a mandate to change from a very successful pom-pom core to a drill team. And what that entailed was the talents of 60 of the most wonderful girls at Chula Vista helping me. And then my lieutenants, Julie Tiffany and Lori Glantz, Carol Kernahan and Betty Jo White. And then the, the best advisor in the world, um, Miss Barrett. So we spent hundreds of hours working up new routines, deciding on what kind of a uniform to wear. So we literally 
changed that uniform from a darling little skirt with little crinolines under it to a sleek, epaulet dress, changed from boots to Roman sandals, changed from a very darling crown to a helmet, and those beautiful pom-poms turned into an acrylic knife. <laughs> So um, it was a joy, and to this day, those hundreds of hours we spent changing from a pom-pom court to a drill team were probably one of the best things and the most pleasurable thing I've ever done in my life. And I have those 60 women to thank for that. So thank you. I'm Linda Garmeyer, and over the last 50 years I've had other names also. I was Linda Garmeyer Pugh when I married Harold Pugh from Sweetwater High School. And then we became unmarried and I married Michael O'Halloran. So then I was Linda O'Halloran. Then we became unmarried and I married Richard Pipes from class of 1962. And we were married for quite a long time and he passed away. And this is my friend. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Gail Berlin Ramsdale. And this is my best friend ever, right here. <laughs> and so we've been friends, we're just talking about it. Since I said the eighth grade, she said the seventh, seventh grade, grade, so we're going to have an argument later. I think she had a better friend than me in seventh grade, but I don't remember. And I'm sure that I did, but <laughs> since that time, she's been my best friend. And we have talked for almost 50 years, almost every day. She has lived in Seattle. She has lived in L.A. almost all of this time. I lived here almost all of that time. But over this 50 years, I would say we have talked many more nights than we've ever not talked, probably exactly. at least four or five times a week for 50 years. Um, we were going to talk about the, one of the most memorable things to us is our vacations. And several years ago, we started going to Jamaica on vacation, and we did that and we've been doing that for about 20 years probably at least at least and jamaica is a really fun place for us <laughs> and we can hardly talk about it and stay straight faced <laughs> straight being the operative word here but and we do mean that and we do mean that <laughs> and over the years we have made up stories to accommodate where we're at and where we're at in our lives at that time at one point we were at a club called sam sarah's and we were in a van going to uh, the beach when these, all these young men got in and they were volleyball players. So we proceeded to be from the Olympic volleyball team of 1910 or something. I don't remember what year. <laughs> but we told them that we had been professional volleyball players. That's right. That's right. One of that. That was, that was one time. That was one of our trips. And the second prank that we pulled, we were at Sam Sarah again, yes. and we decided to catch a cab to go into town. So we saw this cab sitting there and asked if he could take us, and he goes, yeah, jump in, jump in. And so we told him that we were professional country Sing western, western singers. singers. <laughs> so we sang that old song, you know, there's blood on, on the, the saddle. saddle. Blood on, on the ground, ground and, and a great big puddle of blood all around. Right. Anyway, so we <laughs> sing this song and this guy's taking us down this windy hill in Jamaica and it's hot and it's steamy and he drops us off in town and we asked him, how much? How much do we owe you? He says, nothing. And we said, why? He says, I'm not a cab driver. I own Sam Sarah, the hotel. So it was one of those moments we were probably partying a little extra hard and didn't recognize him as an owner. We thought he was a cab driver. Exactly. So over the years, um, our trips changed and Barbara Pradmore became one of our cohorts to go to Jamaica with us. So over the next 10 years or so, Barbara and I went to Jamaica a good number of times. And then about... Um, Fifteen years ago, I bought a timeshare there. One day, Gail and I were in Jamaica, and we just thought it seemed like a real good idea, so that we bought a timeshare. Then, Barbara still liked Jamaica, and Barbara died. And prior to her death, she had um, been really sick, and she'd had to have her teeth removed, and she had false teeth. 
So in her final weeks, she didn't want to wear her teeth anymore. So I kept her teeth for her. So a couple years ago, it was time to go to Jamaica. And so I invited, of course, Gail and I have to go to Jamaica. And we had Linda Hudson and Elaine Stanfield join us to come to Jamaica. And we took Barbara's teeth with us to Jamaica. And so when we got there, we have a driver named Delroy. And we told Delroy that we would like him to handle the arrangements of burying Barbara's teeth. But where would we like them? Well, we wanted them on the top of the mountain at our friend Noel the farmer. He lives on the mountain. And he knows how to bury teeth. So we had Delroy take us to the top of the mountain to Noel's farm. And we got out. And Noel dug us a hole and we planted Barbara's teeth in Jamaica and we know that she will be very happy there. And we did have a graveside service for her too. And we all threw a little dirt on it. And then drove back through the jungle. We love Jamaica, it's our stories. We have many stories of Jamaica. Oh yeah. But we, we can't, can't talk them. about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's what we have that's to say. That's what we have to say. I'm Margie Glenn Mosky. I live in Cape Coral, Florida. I've been there for 30 years, uh, but I still consider Chula Vista my home. Billy Sue Howard. <laughs> Wesley Howard. <laughs> and we live in, me and Joel Howard live in Utah. Anyway, do you remember in junior high school the day we got in a terrible fight? Yeah. You remember it? Yeah. Do you remember why? No, I don't remember why. You were such a little shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming home, I was walking home with my sister uh, from church. It was a Sunday afternoon and uh, you always picked on me. And you've got all the other girls, Nikki, Nikki and all of it, okay. You always picking on me in junior high school. Oh, I'm so sorry. And she made the big mistake of picking on me without her entourage. <laughs> I beat the shit out of her. <laughs> yeah, you tore my shirt off, I yes, think. Yes, I did. In the front yard. And Marilyn's mom across the Called street. Called the cops? No, she was rooting me off. <laughs> Oh, she didn't like you. <laughs> I used to uh, stick my tongue out at her all the time. <laughs> yeah. We grew up together. You know, we went through that adolescent stage, and here we are yeah. so many years later, and I'm so happy to see her. Yeah. <laughs> I really am. I, I asked about you all the time. Oh, did you? Yes, yes. Because oh, Marilyn I... would see you on Facebook, uh, yeah. Joel, and she would keep me informed on how you and Joel were doing. Um, it's nice to be connected. Yeah, and I, I love all of my friends. High school was one of uh, my dearest memories. Uh, Chula Vista is my home and my heart. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're friends again. Me too. <laughs> And I'm not such a bitch anymore. <laughs> With no old? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm done. I'm Sherry Messler Dash Shufflevine. Um, I met the man of my dreams uh, for, for uh, let's see, in 2010, and we married the end of 2011. And as my mother said, he's a keeper. And it's just, it's, it's late in life, you never know. <clears throat> but he's just, he's awesome, and he's kind, and he's generous, and, uh, and he likes me. <laughs> he does, he really, he really likes me, and, and I, I like that. I am a woman in a man's field, and um, I am, I'm a building contractor and a developer of 43 years, and uh, I've had a lot of fun, uh, challenging, um, but I've had a lot of fun, and I, and I, I did okay. No, I, I did okay. Um, and. Uh, um, I love my work. I'm starting to phase it out right now. <clears throat> my husband is a, is a uh, Austin resident, and I'm I live in Rancho Bernardo. 
and um, and I left Chula Vista just 15 years ago. So I've been there. My business uh, started there, and um, and um, I still have an office down there. But actually, I just closed about five years ago, and I have an office in RV. I have four children, and um, my my career helped me support them, which was really good. And um, I've got um, a, a, um, a a man that is a he's a lawyer, and he's a um, CEO and founder of a bank. <clears throat> he's real smart and uh, real, real humble and just a really sweet guy. And my second child uh, is, um, she's a linguist in intelligence in the Air Force. And, um, and she's just as cute as could be. She looks like a Barbie doll. You'd never know that she eavesdrops on people. Um, and then my um, third child uh, is still growing. <laughs> God's not done with her yet. Um, but she's just as colorful and as beautiful as, uh, and she's just sweet. And she's a, um, a what do you call it, an anesthetist, where she does skin care. And, and, um, and then my youngest one is, um, uh, he's actually the contractor. He's following in my footsteps, in his grandpa's footsteps. And I have grandbabies, and they're all just adorable. I love being a grandma. Oh, where'd this come from? Um, my uh, parents um, <clears throat> came to live with me in 07. And uh, they lived with me until they passed. And that probably is my best accomplishment, that I was able to um, give back uh, uh, to, to them as they loved me. Oh, I was very well loved. And, um, and I loved them back always, but I was able to care for them until they passed. Daddy passed in 2010 and my mother in, in 12. And they both, uh, they both died in my arms and you don't get any closer to God than that. And so I'm just, I'm really, really a blessed woman. Really blessed. I've, I've had, believe me, I've, I've had a journey. <laughs> I have a testimony. But I stayed positive through all of it. And um, I, have, uh, I, have, I have good friends and, and um, I have faith and, um, and I have hope. And um, I have a good life and I'm very, very happy. Um, and, and tonight was just so awesome. Um, I met all these, re-met all these girls, these women that, going back to uh, third grade, and um, uh, they're, they're all so sweet and they're, and they're kind, and, um, um, and I'm just blessed to be part of um, Chula Vista High School, 1965. And you know when the girls were in the front and they were doing that routine? Wasn't that the coolest thing? <laughs> it was just so cool. They knew their little routine, and um, I just, I just love everybody here, and me. Um, and uh, anyway, I'm glad to see you. I love the hug. I love the kiss. It was, it was good to go. And my buddies are here. My name's Carol Kernahan. I was married uh, three times. I've been married three times, right? And I'm in the middle of my last divorce, hopefully ever. Um, I'm really glad to be here. It's been really fun. The best thing about this weekend was I just danced with Mike Travis Payne, and he, uh, during our uh, senior year of high school, he dumped me two months before the senior prom. So I consider that dance to the Rolling Stones satisfaction, my finally, my senior prom dance. And um, when he was introducing me to his wife, he said, this is Carol, and I said, yeah, I'm the one he dumped two months before the senior prom. And he admitted that he had done that, so I was very happy to hear that. After 50 years, I finally have some satisfaction. I think Bruce Stanley is the most fabulous man in the world. I think he probably caused the internet to add a couple servers for all the emailing that he did to get all of us to come. I absolutely love him. Um, and it's so funny because I've been talking to a lot of people that I'd never talked to in high school. It, you know, just we were in different clubs, different groups, different whatever it was, and I found myself telling people that I never would have thought I would have before, like my deepest, darkest secrets from the last 50 years. Um, I love seeing Rhonda, um, Rhonda Tiffany, and um, Marla, of course, and um, so many people. It was fun doing the fight song out there tonight. Love doing the fight song, um, and these reunions are just so, they're different from any other experiences that I have during the year, or during the century, or during, because they, um, 
their way of having um, relationships with people that I really love, but on a on a more mature level, because I just remember being so uptight and having to impress and having to do certain things and act a certain way, and and now it's just like. I found myself talking to, um, I think it was Carol Westcott or somebody. It's just been a really great experience. My name's Ann Ayers. Uh, Ann Ayers. Cook. My name's Ann Ayers Cook, and uh, I live in San Francisco, in the East Bay of San Francisco. I've been there for about 30 years. And this is the first reunion that I have uh, ever uh, attended, and I'm so happy that I, I came. And, one of the reasons I'm happy is connecting with uh, people who have, who are part of our story even when we stop thinking about them. And one of those people is Mike, who, uh, you know, who was our student body president. Say something about Okay, that. well, I'm formally known as Mike Payne when I was at Chula Vista High. Uh, 1978, I moved to the South and adopted my middle name Travis uh, as, a, as my given name. That's how people know me in North Carolina where I've been since 1978. It's from the southern side of my family. My daddy uh, was born literally on the Kentucky, uh, Tennessee uh, border. Um, so I have lived in North Carolina since 1978. I'm a lawyer there. I'm married to Kathy Boyd and we have two kids. Um, and like Anne, this is my first reunion, and I am. I'm amazed at the number of folk that are here, people that maybe I didn't quite remember that I start talking to, and the you know neurons come sort of back, and yeah. and uh, and it's wonderful. It's really been really nice. So uh, anyway, Anne and I were uh, running student body government when we were at Chula Vista. Yes. She was the vice president, and I was the president there. Uh, although, and, and to some extent, we did have some role. Uh, I, uh, I don't know if you remember this. Before our senior year, after we had been elected, I was interviewed by the Star News about being student body president. And I said to the Star News that the whole student government was basically a sham because the administration really ran the school and just. We, we were a front for something. It, it wasn't quite that direct, but almost that direct. Uh, but, but still, uh, you know, uh, we had some role in shaping some of the things that happened in the, in the school. We did. We did. I, later in my career, I was a high school principal, and I often thought about uh, and a university professor. But in my high school principal life, uh, I often thought about this very thing because we as an adult, I looked at it and we would send kids to camps uh, to learn how to run the student government, but actually the calendars and all the events and everything uh, had been entered so far ahead that it did restrict what they could do. But I have to say at Chula Vista, uh, I think we did do some things. I think we, we were really lucky. I think because we've all talked about uh, Mrs. Bruce, our, uh, <laughs> but the process of how we got elected uh, the nominating convention, the, the voting, the, uh, the, the kind of a sense that civics mattered. Uh, and I think that carried over to, uh, uh, you know, I think what Mike and I tried to do. And, uh, and, I, and I feel like within the constraints that we had, that, you know, we, we did make a difference. Uh, our, our class, uh, you know, our, our class made a difference. And I do remember that we bought, our, our gift was a, a Spartan head, a statue of the Spartan head. Right. I think it's actually That's still right. in the senior lawn. I hope it is still there. Mm -hmm. I, I looked today, I, I drove by. But the, the joy of seeing people, uh, if you were only going to come to one reunion, I think my suggestion would be for people to come to this one, the 50th. Yeah. Because people are just so weird at the 10th. And you know the 20th is really not much of an improvement, uh, and uh, it just takes a long time. And so to to come back and say, gosh, we were together be before the heartache and the good things and the the, the scars and the losses and the uh, as well as the successes. But there was a time when we could when we believed that we were going to make a difference and that we cared about each other. Uh, and I think that that's a great gift. Thank you for putting it together. 
I'm Jill Ackberger McGreevy, and I live in the same house that I did when I went to high school. And I'm retired after 32 years at Union Bank. And I joined the Army right out of high school. My name is Lupe Asyasaran Cook, and I'm married 44 years to the same guy. And we live in Oracle, Arizona, and we have one daughter that's 29, and a grand dog. <laughs> no grandkids. Uh, my name is Cynthia Anderson Gabbett. <laughs> I've been married 45 years, and we have two daughters and three grandchildren. I've been active in Children's Hospital Auxiliary for many years, and we're retired now and traveling, so we're enjoying that. <laughs> but um, the 50th reunion has been so much fun. Last night out on the patio, the reception was absolutely great because you saw people, obviously, that we hadn't seen for 50 some years. And the part that I found very touching was that everybody was so excited to see the people that were there because I guess we're the ones that really wanted to come. And it was, I got a very sincere hug from a lot of people, which was really nice. And I hope I gave some. So it's just been a wonderful weekend and I'm so glad that we came. I wasn't going to come because I was afraid I wouldn't remember anyone. <laughs> But someone talked me into it, and I'm very glad I did. It was very good to see a lot of people, and even though we had to look at name tags now and then, it was, it was good to reconnect with people. Yeah. We enjoyed it. I've been to all of them except the tent, and I think this was, this was the best one. Uh, people were more relaxed and, like you say, more excited about being here. My name is uh, Aldora. It was Butcher, now it's Blouser. I was married, uh, with, I was with my husband for about 43 years. He passed away um, three years ago. Uh, we have two girls and I have three grandchildren. One's 26, uh, the other's 21, and one's 16. Um, I live in Bradford, Ohio, and that's near Dayton. And. Uh, I don't know, I, I'd never made it to any of the other reunions and stuff, and I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to come or not, and my daughter, my youngest daughter who lives in Ohio said, no mom, you're going, we're paying for it, you are going, you're gonna see these people. And so I said, okay, I'll go. And I'm glad I did, because there's people, even though I don't remember some of, a lot of these people, um, I got a lot of hugs. Uh, a lot of people said they remembered me. Um, they were happy they saw me. And that kind of made me feel good, you know. And um, uh, I'm enjoying myself, I really am. So that's about it, you know. AKA Doug Sobel, uh, living in Wildemar, California. Yeah, Bruce Stanley, and I live in uh, Phuket, Thailand. Can yeah. you spell that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there we are. Okay, anyway, yeah, I live in South Thailand. That's it. Yeah, that's a long ways away. Okay. <laughs> um, I was lucky at Chula Vista High School to, to be in journalism class, and I, I had a, a talent for it, but I didn't have a talent for anything else. So I got a job right out of high school. I went to San Diego State, but then I got a job from a Los Angeles newspaper who sent me to Central America, sent me to South America as a stringer, sending back stories about war zones. And I've just done it off and on all my life. And Thailand, Southeast Asia, 
I've been there 25 years. It's been a really interesting part of the world because of the uh, development, economic development, uh, cultural, political conflicts. There's always, there's always a story. So, and I'm still there. And I'd really uh, rather leave now because uh, I'm, I'm older now, but uh, there's no going home. <laughs> no, there's no going home. Who can afford home anymore, anyway? So, um, and, you know, Carl asked us to talk about you know, what, what's going on with life. What would we share with other people if we had a chance to share it? And what I would share is, if you're not having fun, don't do it. You know, in, in my in my life, I have the opportunity. Well, think about this: if you had to go back and change anything in your life, would you do it? And when I think about that, I wouldn't change a single thing oh. because I'd be afraid that if I changed it, I wouldn't be where I am today. Oh. And I really like where I am today. Mm. You know, the, the good and the bad. Uh, but you know, there are people who say, "Well, it's my job. I got to do it." Bullshit. You don't have to do anything if you don't want to. Uh, I literally have never done a job that I ended up hating. If I ended up hating, I left. I've had I had one job that lasted about an hour. <laughs> uh, and other careers. So, and I think the longest I've been with a particular company is like seven years. Mm -hmm. Well, I've worked mostly in freelance as a writer, so I, I'm a bit like Doug. Is that whenever I've been in a situation where I don't like, there's always someone else I, you know, I, I've been able to work for. But that's good. But Doug was always kind of a shining star in our class because he had confidence. He seemed to always project this aura that he knew where he was going. And he had a destiny. Say. And I just sort of felt like I kind of stumbled along. And, uh, but I agree with him that if I hadn't married one of those wives I did, then maybe I wouldn't be who I am now. So maybe it was okay. Well, if, you, if you've only had one or two wives, you certainly have a left. <laughs> I mean, you know, anybody that's had less than three, three wives and weighs less than 250 pounds shouldn't be alive. <laughs> right. <laughs> Doug, Doug is one of these people that, that we, we remember, though, from high school, and we miss him because he was such a big presence. So I'm really happy to see him again. And that's very kind. I, and you know, our perceptions are interesting because I never perceived myself as confident. Yeah, I mean, you can take me today. Bone ass naked, drop any place in the world, and I'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be fine. I'll be, you know. I believe that. Yeah, I'll be fine in yeah. you know a very short period of time. Yeah. But that's more uh, because you know what can happen. You, know, you, you got you got to do what you got. I think it's consequence and responsibility. We our generation definitely understands consequence and responsibility. You know, if you do it, you go ahead and do whatever you want. But you get, if you do the crime, you pay the you, know, you do the time. I'm Carol Weska, and I'm happy to be here with all of our classmates. I did not graduate. I, I Well, I graduated, but not from Chula Vista High School. I left in the middle of my senior year uh, to go to Arizona for a while, but I'm back and happy to see everybody. And Louise? I'm Louise, and I live in Florida right now, five-year five Floridian, and Carol and I have been friends since the fifth grade. She's the first person I met, and um, I was pretty shy at the time. In fourth grade, I don't think I talked to anybody, but this was fifth grade, <laughs> and Louise was the monitor for the new people, and I happened to be a new person. <laughs> and so there was no messing around with Louise. Uh, she told me where the bathroom was, where the cafeteria was, and at recess time, she took me out and said, we play volleyball, stand here. And I was, my eyes were this big, but I was too afraid to say I can't. So I played volleyball. And uh, well, how it wasn't volleyball? Volley tennis? No, it wasn't it a dodgeball? Oh, it did have a net? Uh, I think so. Okay, volley tennis, I think. Okay, so. <laughs> so I, I there mean, we are. Junior, I mean, this is elementary school. Fifth grade, yeah. yeah. <laughs> probably wasn't volleyball, because volleyball is hard for young kids. It was probably volley tennis. Yeah. Something with a ball and an app. <laughs> <laughs> but we're glad to be here. And we we've been it. friends ever since. We've I visited her in Florida. So she was my, my maid of honor at my wedding. Oh my gosh. I know who you were. <laughs> we married so young. What were we thinking? 19. I, I was 19. Were you 18? 19. Okay. Uh, I had a year of college. Because so Ronnie and I came and visited did you and Duffy, right? Yeah, yeah, After yeah. you yeah. got married and, well, after you had the baby. 
Yes, yes, there was the baby. <laughs> Chris, Chris. <coughs> so, so yeah, we've been together all that time, and the reunion was wonderful because there other I you know I keep in touch with Louise all the time, but it was so nice to see people that you know I haven't seen some for 40, 50. 50 years yeah and ironically the people in the next to us in the pavilion room were 18 which is how old we were 50 years ago I thought that really? was really yes yes I didn't know so that. they were having their 18th birthday and I'm thinking gosh all those cute little things are gonna look <laughs> are gonna be like us in 50 years. <laughs> but yeah we've been friends forever and yeah it was just a great place to grow up and yeah, Chola yeah. Vista was a good place to yeah. go. All the girls, all of us who lived in, you know, an area would get together on our way to junior high and um, rat our hair. Junior high and high school. And spray it. And Brightwood, 4th, 5th. 5th, date. We all lived in this one area and we all got, yeah, we changed, <laughs> traded clothes, rolled up the hems so that we'd have short skirts and <laughs> and when the principal called us into the office, we unrolled them so that when we got down on our knees, they would touch the floor. <laughs> and then one year we decided that we needed to um, peroxide our hair. And we all showed up with uh, orange bangs. Yeah, we all had drinks. orange bangs that we thought were semi-attractive. I don't think we thought it was the best thing we'd ever done. <laughs> and I think somebody told us we got sent to the office for being a gang. That was in junior high. I remember we all wore black oh, one okay. day. So it had nothing to do with the hair. No, we all wore black. <laughs> one day we all wore black to junior high and we all got sent home to change our clothes. Well, that wouldn't have involved me because my mother wouldn't let me wear black. Even because nice girls didn't wear black. But I do remember in eighth grade or ninth grade, we all got black curry pants for Christmas. <laughs> so maybe that was it. Maybe. maybe. I, that was the only black thing I owned till I was 35, I think. <laughs> Hi, my name is Carl Archia and I live with my partner Gail Berlin. We met at our 30 year reunion, but we didn't get together and seal the deal until 2000. Between us, we have four children and three grandkids. We live in Chatsworth, California in the Santa Susana Mountains with our two Amazon parrots. I am very, very privileged indeed to have met and talked with so many of you, particularly you brave souls that volunteered to sit in front of the camera and tell your life stories. All of you that came to our reunion made it a fabulous once in a lifetime event and it wouldn't have been the same without each and every one of you. After listening to and editing these interviews what stuck with me most is that after 50 years I think we're all finally on the same page. What a great group of people you all are. Thank you. May God bless and keep you always May your wishes all come true May you always do for others And let others do for you May you build a ladder to the stars And climb on every rock And may you stay be true. May you always know the truth and see the light surrounding you. May you always be courageous, stand upright and be strong, and may you stay.
your hands always be busy may your feet always be swift may you have a strong foundation when the winds change your shift may your heart always be joyful may your song always be sung and may you stay